Hey everyone, I've got another piece of math technology that we're going to look at. It allows you when you're in a Google slide or Google Doc to add equations and it works pretty well and it doesn't require the knowledge of LaTeX programming or MathXL or some of the other uh, type of languages out there. So again, you see I've got a sample assignment up. It happens if you notice the cursor flipping, it's got a text box. And what I'm going to do is I already have it added in here, but I'm going to show you. You'd want to go, if it's not already in there, it's called Hypatia. It, I'm going to go to Get Add-ons, and then I'm going to type in, well, I want, you can search down through, you could probably search for Equation Editor and see what comes up there. Uh, it's right here, it's called Hypatia. And remember to install an add-on, you just, this would say install here and then go through the process of choosing your school account and adding it. I, if it doesn't work, then that's something you have to talk with IT about, but it should allow you to access it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at solving this equation, but I want to be able to type my steps in. So I'm going to go to Hypatia. Now, if everything is just straightforward math and there's no weird symbols, then you could just type it. But this allows you to put the symbols in. Now, you will have to use the symbol palette. You'll see it up along the top here. There's a down here in the main screen is where you type things. Then you've got where it says x squared. You'll see this uses all your common things. Here's your fraction. Hitting slash in this will not create a fraction. It will just be a slash. Your uh, square root. Uh, so, or sorry, this is your long division, not your square root. Subscript and superscript, though, underscore and caret do work. This is your, uh, for your absolute value, this is one that we're going to use. You do have this keystroke on your, it is on your keyboard. And you have summation, you have your infinity symbol, your limits, logarithms, and all that. And some of the main Greek letters that we use to represent variables like theta, alpha, beta, gamma. Sign gives you your trig stuff, calculus, and some of the higher level algebra things. Plus minus gives you inequality, binary relations, binary operators, so your quotient symbol, your dot operator, your times. Notice when you hover over it, it'll tell you what it represents and it will tell you what, it, this is for composition of functions. It'll tell you uh, some of the terminology. Then you have your Greek alphabet. Now these are only the letters that we tend to use in math. So you have your lower cases, and then you have some of the upper cases that we use a lot like delta, theta, pi, sigma, phi, omega. Arrow just gives you arrows to draw and connect things with that you can use as well as some of your special uh, accent symbols that we use for congruence and, and some of those. And your number sets, not equals to natural, integers, rational, real. Then these deal with measurement things. These are things that you could just type, but it's some of the common measurement symbols. Then you have your brackets. These will auto size. So the more you put in them, the more the larger they get. Then this little dot is for matrices to be able to make grids and to make these cases. We use these a lot in higher math. And then the pen is that you can switch to text, to put comments with things. Now that you could always just do in Google Slides itself instead of worrying about it there. So let's say I'm going to write, and unfortunately, it's, it doesn't allow me to move this screen around. It's right in the front. But we know it was absolute value. So I'm actually going to, just going to use, I start typing, and it, it doesn't know what to do. So it does a search for math symbol. That's the backslash. I actually want to do shift and backslash so I get absolute value. So I'm going to choose absolute value. Notice it puts both of them. It's sort of small right now, but I can start typing in. It was negative 5 plus b. And that's still inside. Then I move to the right to get outside. 
and it equaled, uh, let's take a look here. I can scroll it so I can see it. Uh, minus three equals negative two. Now I'm gonna go down and see, now notice if I hit enter, it cannot jump to a new line. I don't care about converting it. I'm just gonna insert it. It takes a little bit of thought. And now I need to close this window, and I can move that. Now this is one place where I do see a bit of a fault that I haven't worked through yet. I just found this out. It does not seem, let's see, mini editor puts it on the side. This is the one that I would rather use as the mini editor, so it's on the side. So I can go here to the mini editor. And I know that I'm going to add three to each side so I can get rid of the minus three. I can make this, if I add three to that, make it a one. I'm going to click elsewhere. And discard. Okay. So you do need to do it in a separate thing. If you hold on to it, you can edit some of these. So I'm going to go. I want that, negative 5 plus b, move to the right, equals 1, insert. And let's see where it drops it. The first one it dropped near the bottom. This one it dropped near the bottom, but it kept it in a smaller font, which is good. Now I'm going to click elsewhere, go back here. So this one does allow you to edit. So I know I'm going to have negative 5 plus b equals 1. Insert. And we'll wait for it. And we'll move it. Click elsewhere. And we know negative 1 is our other. Oh, I want to be elsewhere. Discard. So negative 5 plus b equals negative 1. So just remember that when you go to a new line, click somewhere else outside so it doesn't edit what you already put down. Now I'm going to organize these a bit better. So I've got my first one, my original problem. And then we had what it changed to. And then we split it into two parts because it's an absolute value. And notice it puts a red line across so I can line things up a bit better. And I can even add, I always like to do this, add some arrows to, I know that these are connecting. And then I can add another arrow to say it goes here. And another one to say it goes here. And then click somewhere else. I know that it's, I add the five, so B equals when I add the 5 of 6, and we know that this one, when it pops up, is going here. Click somewhere else. Let the editor shift and B equals add the 5, we get a 4. You could show the other steps. It's not going to show as easily. Editors don't work well for large multi-step things. And then again, if I want to, I can always, to highlight it, I can click on it. It's an image, so it has that text, that box around it, which is a border, and I can give the border a color. So I know, okay, that's my answer. You could connect it with arrows. You could do all sorts of things. So this is an editor that works in Google Docs and Google Drive. I don't know if, you, if you're going to do it in Google Docs. You have to do an add-on as well. But it is a useful add-on. Uh, Google Slides is where our worksheets tend to be in. So that's where it tends to work out pretty well. So it's just one more option that you have. And I do recommend that you take a look at it and see how useful it is for you. It can make a lot of the math a lot easier to type. So and without knowing programming. So uh, 
give it a try, see how it works. And anytime I find more uh, programs, I'll let you know.